Hello and welcome to Nick Snack for Neologisms, episode 24, where we define and discuss the most amazing words in the English language. Last episode, we covered contumacious, florid, vitiate, and usury. And in this episode, we're covering epitome, blasphemy, jubilant, and renege. Those are pretty good words. I like them. Let's get on with our first word. Our first word is epitome, or if you're my sister, you pronounce it epitome. She was once studying for the GRE, and she's going through all these words, and she doesn't read a lot. My sister's very intelligent, especially scientifically. But she came across this word, and she thought it was epitome, because it looks like epitome, but it's actually pronounced epitome. It's spelled E-P-I-T-O-M-E. It's a noun, epitome, E-P-I-T-O-M-E, fairly phonetic. And it means a person or thing that is typical of or possesses to a high degree the features of a whole class. Let me read that again because it's a little tricky. A person or thing that is typical of or possesses to a high degree the features of a whole class. He is the epitome of goodness. So epitome, when I think of epitome, I just think it's kind of like something that's characteristic of a whole class. So an epitomical student, epitomical is the adjective of the noun epitome. Epitomical student is a student who maybe studies a lot, arrives to class on time, pays attention in class, and is self-motivated to learn. That would be the epitomical student, epitome. So it's a person or thing that is characteristic of the entire class or what you would want to be characteristic of that entire class. Classical example, perfect illustration of something, the ultimate of something, the archetype of something, or maybe something that's a great representation of something is the epitome of it. So if you read a book recently and it was of a specific genre, I don't know, maybe it was uh, an action book and you're like, man, this book was awesome. This is how every action book should be. You would consider that action book to be the epitome of action books. Maybe I mean adventure books. I don't even know if they make action books. I think they're called adventure books. They make action movies. I don't know. But you guys get what I'm saying, right? Because our mayor is the epitome of a good citizen, he has been in our office for over 10 years. Mike Tyson was the epitome of a prize fighter. Lightning quick, powerful, and contumacious in character. As I looked around the crime-ridden neighborhood, I realized the uncaring community was the epitome of everything that was wrong with our city. The award-winning film is the epitome of classic romance movies. Maybe there was something in there that was epitomical of that movie. Classic romance movie. I don't watch classic romance movies, but I would imagine if it's the epitome of a classic romance movie, there's probably some tension, conflict, breakup somewhere in the middle of the movie, and then at the very end... They come together and there's some sort of romantic kiss at the end that signifies their relationship is solid or healthy once again. I don't know. The high school athlete who won the Good Citizen Award is the epitome of what a great student should be. Epitome. So that's a good word. Epitome. It's a good word to have in your vocabulary. And I think it's a word you hear every now and then. A lot of people know, maybe not a lot, but a decent amount of people know what the word epitome means. It's a good word. All right, let's move on to our next word, which is blasphemy. It's one of my favorite words. I don't know why. I just like blasphemy. It's fun to say blasphemy. It's a noun. It's spelled B-L-A-S-P-H-E-M-Y. Blasphemy. Sometimes you could just say blaspheme or blasphemy. Either one. It's a noun. If it's an adjective, you'd say blasphemous. B-L-A-S-P-H-E-M-Y. Blasphemy. And it means impious utterance or action concerning God or sacred thing. So that's its religious definition. So if you say something that goes against even just religion as a whole or God or anything that's sacred to religious, what you're saying would be considered blasphemous. And if you guys have been listening for my, to, my pod, to my podcast for a while, you'll know that most of the definitions we go through also have what you might call a loose definition. So a loose definition of blasphemy, the definition that I use when I use it, is irreverent behavior or action or words towards anything that's held sacred or priceless, etc. So you might say he uttered blasphemies against life itself, because most of us hold life sacred, right? So if you're saying something bad against life, that would be considered blasphemous. 
So when I think of blasphemy, I just think of anything that's kind of disrespectful towards maybe social norms or what's expected of us in a certain situation or a certain circumstance. So for instance, right, if you go to the library and you're being loud and obnoxious and you're distracting people, that would be considered blasphemous behavior inside of a library. Or I don't know, if you go to a movie and you're you're saying, oh, this is what happens next. And if you're being really loud, that would be blasphemous behavior inside of a movie theater. So it's not always it's not always religious, religiously based. It can be used like that as well. But originally it started out with anything that was against religion or against God would, was blasphemy. And now that's got a nice sort of a secular definition to it. So blasphemy. Yeah. How do we remember blasphemy? We all know who Femi is, right? You guys know who Femi is? I'm going to tell you who Femi is. Femi, Femi is this wonderful woman. She's kind. She's considerate. She's loving, she's thoughtful, she thinks about others, she makes good choices in her own life, she's active, she's healthy, she's just what a constant, what, what, she's, in a, she's the epitome of a woman. Femi is just wonderful. And so we would never want to blast Femi out of our lives because she's too sacred for us. Anyhow, that's what I got. It's kind of corny, blast Femi. I don't know, you guys rolling with that one or not? I couldn't... <laughs> Like, this one's as bad as epitome. I couldn't come up with anything. So I was like, all right, I'm going to come up with something for blasphemy. And that's what I came up with. So hopefully, when you see blasphemy, if you can't remember the def- the definition, you'll think, oh, yeah, there was Femi. She was great and wonderful. And we don't want to blast her out of our life, out of our lives. My grandmother is very religious and will kick you out of her house if you display any kind or any form of blasphemy. When Jake made a joke in church, His mother accused him of blasphemy. The florid display of wealth was considered blasphemous by the natives who lived in slums in the inner cities of Brazil. In Judaism, usury is considered blasphemous. If you criticize the home football team in Joe's Bar and Grill, you will be accused of blasphemy by some of their regular customers. So that's blasphemy. It's a fun word. the, The times I use blasphemy is usually... I don't know, like if I'm in a classroom or something and says, someone says something that's unpopular or it's sort of contrary to popular belief, even if I might agree with it myself, I'll just be like, ah, hit the table and be like, that's blasphemy, even though it's probably true. So blasphemy is kind of fun. I like to use the word just in everyday language. It's just a fun word. All right, let's move on to our next word, which is jubilant. It's an adjective. It's spelled J-U-B-I-L-A-N-T. Jubilant. It's phonetic. J-U-B-I-L-A-N-T. Jubilant. And it means showing great joy, satisfaction, or triumph. Rejoicing, exultant. The cheers of the jubilant victors. The jubilant climax of the symphony. So if you've ever had a day where you're just feeling awesome, you know, you're on top of the world, you're happy, extraordinarily happy, you're euphoric, you're just feeling great, you're triumphant, maybe you're overjoyed, you're gleeful. Those would be kind of synonyms, loose associations for the word jubilant. I think of jubilant, I just think of someone who's just very excited and no matter, you know, you're so excited when you're jubilant, so happy when you're jubilant that no matter what could happen, the world could just start closing in on itself. The sun could go away, but it wouldn't matter because you're that jubilant. You're that happy. How do we remember jubilant? I have no idea again, you guys, but... I will say that jubilant to me, for whatever reason, if you say jubilant, just say it, jubilant. It's just one of those words that I kind of think has its definition locked in. Jubilance. It just sounds like a fun, nice, happy word. So hopefully you see jubilance and you'll just think, ah, positivity, or you'll just think it's a good word. That'll be enough to key you into the fact that it just means showing great joy. Jubilance. We're jubilant. Nothing. Nothing could vitiate the jubilance of Mark after he found out he won the lottery. Can you imagine if you won the lottery, you would be overjoyed. You would be jubilant. Hysterical, actually. Probably hysterical. But you'd still be jubilant. I am jubilant to learn that my sister is finally having a baby. Laughing always puts me in a jubilant mood. Watching the ball drop on New Year's is always a jubilant moment. Reaching your goals, consummating a marriage, buying your dream house, reaching inner peace. These are all things that may cause you 
to be jubilant. Jubilant, overjoyed, jubilant. Just a nice, kind of a cute little word, isn't it? Jubilant. All right, let's move on to our next word, which is renig. This is another great word. Out of all these words, I use, well, I guess I use epitome, blasphemy, and renig. I'm going to start using jubilant because I think it's just kind of funny. But the other three I use, and this one, are, uh, this word I use too, I think it's a good word to know. These are fairly common. I wouldn't call these overly advanced, but they're kind of advanced words. Renig. It's a verb, R-E-N-E-G-E, reneg, and it simply means to back out on your word or on your promise. So you could renege on your promise, renege on something. Maybe you, maybe your friends called you up last night and they were like, dude, come to this party with us. We're going to have a ton of fun. And you said, yeah, and then later you just didn't show up because you reneged. You just weren't feeling up to it. I do that all the time. It's why I have no friends. I renege. All, I'm, I'm a reneger. I'm not going to lie. I'm a reneger. I like to renege. It's really fun to renege, you know? I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why it's fun to renege. Because if you don't renege, you have responsibility, right? I would say reneging presupposes some sort of responsibility that you have. And as you guys know, I, I don't, I'm not a big fan of responsibility. I'm not. You know, it always feels good to renege. It's like when you renege... You can just, ah, oh, it's like, thank God, I don't have to go and do that. I reneged on my dogs a few days ago. I told them I was going to take them to the park, and then I reneged, and I felt so much better. And then later, I didn't feel so good because they wouldn't leave me alone. So maybe reneging is not always good. But, you know, maybe it's not a good idea to back out on your on your word. Reneging is sacrosanct in our society, is it not? I mean, if you back out on your word, aren't you kind of, isn't that kind of a bad thing? Doesn't our, our American world sort of say that reneging is bad? Whatever, I'll still renege and I enjoy it. Unabashedly so. I have nothing wrong with reneging, you guys. There's nothing wrong with backing out on one's word. Whatever. What are words, right? They're just utterances that come sound, arbitrary sound that is emitted from our mouths. That's what a word is. And I have no problem reneging on that. All right? Leave me alone. So renege, how do we remember renege? This is a clever way. This is All right, at least, all right, my other three mnemonics sucked. I'll give you guys that. But this mnemonic, it's not my own. It's by a user on mnemonicdictionary.com. This mnemonic, I think, is legit. This user said that a renegade is a traitor of his country, where if you renege, you're a traitor of your own words. That's kind of cool. And you remember what a renegade is? You know, that outlandish kind of unlawful person does his own thing. Traitor of his own country. If you're a, a reneger, and if you're someone who reneges, you're a traitor of your own words. That one's good, yeah? It's a good mnemonic. Although my father made a promise to extend my curfew, he later reneged and ordered me home by 11. If Harriet is going to renege on her responsibility, she should let us know now so we can find another sitter before it gets too late. I went to another car dealer after the salesman tried to renege on the low price he initially offered me. So I guess it's cool if I renege, but if someone reneges on me, that sucks. I I think I'm just an evil, selfish person. Because I, I still renege, you know, do unto others as he would do unto you. And I don't do it. That's evil. Definition of evil, you guys. Don't renege. Reneging is so bad. Many people lost their homes when the local bank decided to renege on its late payment extension program. Yeah, I could see that. I think my, for my mortgage, unless they've reneged, I think I have to like the 15th and then I have to pay some sort of fee. Word. Yeah. All right. So that wraps it up for episode 24, let's go through our four words using our horrible mnemonics and see if we can remember the definitions or some loose associations or some synonyms for any of these words. Our first word was epitome. Epitome. Because our mayor is the epitome of a good citizen, he has been in, our, he has been in office for over 10 years. What does epitome mean? Boom. It's that thing that is like a classical representation of everything else that it's a part of, right? A person or a thing that is typical of or possesses to a high degree the features of a whole class. The epitome of a fish is a fish with really nice fins that flap well in the water. Epitome. Our next word was my favorite word, blasphemy. Blasphemy. What does blasphemy mean? I gave you the blasphemous joke with Jesus who had holes in his feet and he couldn't walk on water anymore. Poor guy. What does blasphemy mean? 
noise. It's anything that's against religion or God or anything that is disrespectful to what is considered a social norm or what's expected behavior in a specific situation or circumstance. That's what blasphemy is. So those who are renegades are probably quite blasphemous in their behavior. Then we moved on to the next word, which was jubilant. What does jubilant mean? We had no mnemonic for this, but I did say that, to me at least, the definition is contained in the sound of the word jubilance. Maybe not. I don't even know if that's a thing. What do you guys think? What does the word jubilance mean? Awesome. Showing great joy. You're just really ecstatic and excited and happy. You are jubilant. You win the lottery, you're going to be jubilant. If you win the lottery, please consider making a donation to my podcast, by the way. All right. I will be jubilant if you do that. Just send me like five bucks. Okay. That's all I'm asking for. That'll make me jubilant. Our last word was renege. This word I use all the time. It just makes me feel smart when I use it. Renege, you know? And remember, I like to renege too. Something I do on a regular basis. What was our mnemonic for renege? Do you guys remember? It had to do with a renegade in his country. You're a renegade. You're a traitor of your country. If you renege, you're a traitor to your own words, your own promise. To renege simply means to back out on your own word, on your own promise, or what you've said. Sweet. All right. So that wraps it up for Nick Snack for Neologisms, episode 24. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you haven't already, please leave me a review on iTunes. It lets me know how I'm doing. It helps others find my podcast. And if you'd like to make a donation to my podcast, you can visit my website, nicksnackforneologisms.com. There's a little red donate button on there. It'll take you to PayPal. You can submit your donation there. Thanks again for listening, and we will see you on episode 25. Bye-bye.